Seven years ago, I was working for a community organisation here in Brisbane, and I was in that early stage development of, of starting a social enterprise. And at that stage, SVA approached me and asked me if I'd head up the development of the first social enterprise hub uh, in Australia, here in Brisbane. And at that stage, the term social enterprise wasn't very well understood. It wasn't known much but at all. In the past seven years, there's been a plethora of new terms that have been thrust upon the it. term social enterprise. We've got a whole range of things in terms of social finance, collective impact, social procurement, social return on investment. It just goes on in terms of the language that's changed in, in this space in that time. So the language, the blogs, the courses, the intermediaries like social traders and SVA uh, have all burgeoned in that time, in that seven years. But I thought it would be worthwhile just reflecting on uh, what we do know already, particularly in the Queensland context. Um, but what we do know in Queensland is from Queensland Government in terms of that there's, there's a change of language uh, there as well. There's productivity gains, cost reductions, improving outcomes, payment by outcomes. So there's a whole new way of looking at what's happening. And what we do know is that government's looking for a different kind of relationship. So there's talk about leverage of dollars. So it's no longer not talking about paying for everything in the inputs in community services. And I noticed in one of the questions this morning, people were raising the issue for the community sector that's been underfunded and the infrastructures um, uh, sort of, you know, not developed. You know, what happens with that? And certainly the answer is that it's, it's got to be a new way of doing things, that we're looking for entrepreneurial business skills and we're looking for outcomes and best solutions. So firstly, SVA as an organisation says, you know, we invest in social change. It's a young organisation, it's only 10 years old, and it started from uh, a number of the large not-for-profits and uh, AMP Foundation as well, so it was the Benevolent Society, Work Ventures and Smith Family alongside the AMP Foundation, who realised that there was a gap and that there was a need to be able to respond more flexibly to what a changing environment we were in. And uh, it was for that that the SVA was established. And really the framework is quite simple. It's three things. And we need dollars, we need improved capital, we need talent, we need the right people, and it's the right people in the right positions. Uh, so having the business skills and the understanding of social, that it's not one or the other. I love uh, social traders' diagram of the, the heart and the dollars. It's saying we need to get the balance. Um, in terms of the right talent. And finally, we need to have the evidence. We need to build the evidence base. And building the evidence base is also so that you know what's working and what's not working so that you can actually change it, so you can make sure that you're going to be responsive to the reason why you exist. Now, the second thing I wanted to talk about is um, the social enterprise environment in Queensland. So just a little bit about uh, what's happened here. So SBA in Queensland's worked with about 60 social enterprises, but we've also had some contact with, you know, probably well over 100 sort of light touch with social enterprises. That there's been, you know, going back to Mark's area, the, the bucket that we primarily worked with in Queensland has been the employment bucket. So it's those social enterprises that have been creating employment and there's been, uh, you know, a significant number of jobs there. And in terms of that um, leveraging of funds, there's been the capacity to leverage funds and pro bono support from a range of different sources. And so there's been quite a significant $6 million invested in Queensland. And if you work out what that return is, we've estimated that that has cost about $12,000 per job for the jobs that have been created. So once again, it's sort of saying, let's build the evidence base about what it actually takes. And we've used the methodology of um, of social return on investment. And across the ones that we've done, the eight we've done, we'd say for every dollar invested, there's been a $5 return. What I would like to do though, is just give you two case studies. And uh, the first is, you know, both are from North Queensland. The first is Clean Care Cairns. Uh, and Clean Care Cairns has grown out of a consortium 
of four different organisations in Cairns. What and I love about Clean Care Cairns is you know, it started with Worklink exploring whether they could buy a business, whether they could find a business that had the good business sense, that had the business that was driving it, and it would provide the right kind of employment for the people that they were looking to employ with mental health issues. Looked around, searched, could, you know, uh, couldn't find the right business. In that process, there's such good uh, trust you know, relationships in the sector in Cairns that uh, it was also with centre care and aftercare saying, you know, perhaps we can look at doing something together in this space, in this new space. And uh, what we began to say is, you know, if we put some skin in the game, if we put some dollars in and start to do a feasibility, could we actually kickstart a business and find the procurement opportunities in cleaning to actually uh, start that business. So yes, we can do that social procurement with uh, Cairns Regional Council, and I was helping as well in terms of pitching the idea of social procurement to Cairns Council. But actually, you need to have a track record of doing business as well if you're going to get a contract. So can we start with our allies, with other not-for-profit organisations, to get their cleaning jobs and start a business from that point? And with ambassadors across uh, the three organisations were joined by Disability Employment Services who were going to set up their own cleaning business and they said, no, we won't do that, we'll join and do one to have more impact. That they were able to start a business using social procurement but from within the not-for-profit sector. Yes, government needs to um, take on the challenge of social procurement but even within the not-for-profit sector, we've recognised that that's a, a big budget there. How do we spend our own money and how can we spend that money differently to get greater social outcomes? The journey is on, there's tenders going on, Clean Care Cairns is, is running well, but it's been a really interesting lesson there. The other study, uh, case study I'd like to share is um, coming from Cairns and Gavin Cumsing there's a fellow here and he's um, he wanted to make sure that guys, Indigenous guys who were coming out of prison had some work to go to so that they didn't end up back in prison. He had the social focus of knowing that he wanted to work with these guys and do some of the um, sort of social connection back into the community and running a program called Red Dust Healing, but also wanted to build the business side of it and uh, have some employment for the, for the fellows who were coming out of prison. And he was running a program uh, within Townsville City Council, but he realised that a program, it'll be over and finished. He wanted to have a business so that the job would go on and people would have secure employment. And uh, he came to us and we've done some work in terms of helping set up, you know, getting pro bono legals to set up a legal structure, to do the financials, to actually make sure that he had a business case there and to go back to Townsville City Council to say, we need a secure contract. If you want us to keep doing this work, we've got, we've got the capacity to do it and we need to get some contracts operating. And that's, uh, you know, Townsville City Council came to the party on that and have been very happy with the quality of work that's been done in terms of property maintenance. So the work is parks maintenance. Um, he has got a good track record. We've done a social return on investment from that and found that for every dollar invested, there's a $9 return in terms of the out employment outcomes for, for those fellows. What have the lessons been in terms of, you know, over that seven years working with a cross section of social enterprises? You know, what I would say is keep the goal in mind and collaborate. The, the, uh, Cairns example, I think, is a fabulous... Know what the, what, why you're doing a social enterprise in the first place. It's about needing the business skills. So with Clean Care Cairns, they got someone who knew a cleaning business to run that. The values were aligned, so the person had the support from the different agencies to make sure that the kind of employment that was created was going to be right for the people they wanted to employ, but he knew what he was doing in the cleaning business. This one's an interesting one. It's the organisational commitment. Like, for those of you who are in the not-for-profit space, to go into social enterprise, it's going in with your eyes open and knowing that you, 
need a, a different skill set and you need the commitment of the organisation and the board of the organisation that you're coming We've from. We've talked about measurement. So, yes, you need to measure the social impact and the social return on investment we've talked about is one of those me mechanisms to measure that you're making a difference, that there is a social goal in what you're doing. But it was also, like clean kick hands, is making sure you could get the business testimonials to say, yes, we can deliver a really good product in terms of cleaning or property maintenance or whatever kind of business that you're going into. And the other is that, that it needs to be, we need to change our language in terms of investment rather than grant. If you get a grant, what's expected? If you get a grant, the expectation is you spend it. If you don't spend it, there's an expectation that you've got to give it back. So of course, organisations spend money. If you're running a business, it's a different thinking and you're actually thinking, um, you're making a profit, you're building sustainability, you're thinking about the long term and you're making sure that um, it's not about spending but it's about creating and building sustainability. So it's quite a different way of thinking. Many of the social enterprises that take out loans are more successful than those who kickstart off grants because the thinking is different in how you do it. And that. it's just making sure that you do a reality check and um, you know there's a few different tools around. The social traders tool, um, the builder is a great one, online tool, SVA has some tools and there's a range of really good resources around. Finally, I just wanted to tell a couple of little stories about signs of hope, about what's looking good for the future. So many of you will remember the ABC Learning Centres that went um, bankrupt in 2008. And what happened then is that the receivers said there's those childcare centres that are viable and there's those that are, are not viable. And they were actually kind of trying to sell a business, the viable ones, and then looking for the community sector to look at, take over those that weren't financially viable. So what happened around that? There was a collaboration that developed across Social Ventures Australia, the Brotherhood of St Lawrence, Mission Australia, and the Benevolent Society to actually say, this is an opportunity. There's a need here for good quality childcare. It makes a huge difference to the future of our children in terms of what happens in that early early years and that we're able to put together a package, a financial package to purchase those uh, centres. But obviously it was also negotiating back that it wasn't just the unprofitable ones but to say we need to know that this is going to be a viable business. So it, it was a massive piece of work that was done and what was able to be done is to, we, to buy 678 childcare centres across Australia to ensure that there was quality childcare available, that there was some of the profit that could be reinvested to those children most at risk and that it would continue on as a profitable business. So that was investment across government, across philanthropists, across social investors. And it's, it's the largest acquisition of a social enterprise in Australia and really a flagship worldwide and it's based here in Brisbane, which is fantastic. So I think that's a real sign of hope about how we can work differently to bring about significant social change and social impact. The other sign of it's hope is that there is new forms of investment round across uh, the seed of cities talked about. And gradually what's happening is there are other new funds coming up. Foresters last week launched an early stage social enterprise fund. So it's becoming a more mature market. And similarly, SVA is auspicing uh, a new fund which was launched last week, which is an Indigenous social enterprise fund, and that's in collaboration with uh, Reconciliation Australia and IBA. It is a changing space and there's a new opportunity. And the final sign of hope is that there's, here in Queensland, we've got the first um, peak body that's um, democratically representing social enterprise in Queensland called the Queensland Social Enterprise Council. So check it out. It's, um, it's grown up from from the grassroots, it's operating and it, it provides an opportunity for people to connect up and that's going to be launched in the next week or two.